Hi there, this is Jason Renshaw and I thought I would uh, focus this video tutorial, this short video tutorial on common mistakes that are made in the TOEFL speaking section for the six questions. Now, um, in my experience, I've checked, I think, more than about 5,000 speaking submissions for TOEFL speaking um, alone. And you know that's quite a lot, and you do start to see a lot of patterns, a lot of common um, problems that happen with the speaking section. Now, um, one thing I have noticed is that language use, in terms of grammar, word usage, selection, and that kind of thing, is not normally much of a problem. Um, most of the test takers I've experienced um, don't have major problems with their grammar in terms of you know uh, how they're putting their sentences together. Um, some some of them do, but not many. Uh, most of my test takers have had pretty good grammar, pretty good uh, use of language. Um, the two problems that are probably most prominent are the delivery, in terms of pronunciation, but um, most especially, the most common problem is handling the content. Um, actually, how you develop your topic, or you know, you you develop the the frame of your answer, that is the biggest problem that I find test takers have. So I'm not going to really do, uh, deal with the pronunciation issue here because that varies a lot by different test taker. I might dedicate a different video tutorial to that one, but I will just quickly go through the most common mistakes that I find in terms of content and topic, in terms of how you work with the topic itself um, for the six questions. So beginning with question one, the independent question number one, which is the open choice, uh, personal choice question. Um, the biggest uh, error I find for this one is that people do not provide a description. Now question one always asks you to describe a person or a place or a thing or an event and you should describe that briefly and then give your reasons for selecting that person or, or thing. Um, and a lot of people go straight for the reasons. They go, you know, um, a person who inspires me a lot is my father because boom, 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 boom. And they do not provide a description. And basically you're sort of missing up to a third of or even up to a, a half of your answer by not providing any sort of description. So, you know, make sure you describe this person or this place um, you know, give some background information. Create a context, as I call it, a contextual description. It doesn't need to be a lot. It doesn't need to use up a whole lot of time. But if you're going to talk about a place, say where this place is, you know, um, a couple of description, uh, descriptive phrases about it. If it's a person, you know, how did you meet this person? How do you know them? Um, what's their personality like? That kind of thing. So make sure you do provide a description. Um, before you give reasons for question one. That's really important. For question two, which is the other independent question, where you need to make a preference between two options, um, the most common content-based error I find for that question is that people do not back up their reasons sufficiently. They'll give reasons for their choice, but they don't really back that up or support that reason well enough. Um, they're very vague or they give just uh, additional details. Um, but the idea is that you should always back up your reasons with some sort of um, personal uh, example, if you can, from your own life or from things you see around you. Um, or, you know, hypothetical um, sort of examples to support your reason. But they have to be tangible. They have to be real, realistic and, and sort of, they, they have to be convincing to the listener. Um, a lot of people give a lot of reasons but don't back them up. So that's really important for question two. Now, question three, where you read the notice, um, listen to a conversation and, um, you know, state the person's opinion plus their reasons for having that opinion. Most common mistake I find for this one is that people do not incorporate the notice into their answer enough. Um, they go straight for the opinion and the reasons and you know they're not really showing their ability to integrate two sources. That's the key for question three and four is the ability to be able to integrate what you read with what you heard and then talk about it. 
Um, so make sure for question three that you either give a quick summary of that notice at the beginning of your answer, even you know 15 to 20 seconds, summarize what that notice was about or the purpose of that notice um, before you start dealing with the person's opinion and their reasons for having that opinion. Alternatively, what you could do is you could build details from the notice into your answer. So if you're explaining a person's reason, um, one of the reasons, you could say, you know, as per the notice, which explained that, blah, 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 that relevant detail for that reason. Um, so either way, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, um, you should be including some sort of relevant detail from that notice to create the context. The idea is that the listener should be able to understand everything that's go gone on um, without having to read that notice or having to listen to that conversation. They should be able to understand it all based on what you are explaining. So if you don't mention the notice, you know, a lot of those details could sound uh, irrelevant or they could be hard to follow. Now for question four, the biggest problem for question four is lack of integration. People either quickly summarize the notice and then quickly summarize the, um, the, the lecture, or they just talk about the lecture. Um, they don't take the relevant points from both sources and join them together. So you really need to break down that lecture into parts, and as you explain each part, then, you know, integrated across to the reading, a relevant point or theory in the reading. Um, I've dedicated whole videos um, around the place to question four, so I won't go into a lot of detail here, but the key point is are you actually integrating the information, not just summarizing the two sources, are you joining them together and showing that you understand how they work together? That's really important. Now for question five, um, most people handle question five quite well actually. Um, the problem is that they um, don't link their answer for their own opinion to some of the details that were given in the, um, in the conversation. Um, they jump straight to their own opinion and they talk about why they would take that and they don't um, mention some of those key points that were given in the conversation like, you know, um, uh, one of the suggestions was he could try an online course. Um, but he mentions that he's never tried that before. You know, if you don't say, but he mentions that he hasn't tried that before, you're missing important information from that summary. Um, so you need to link to it when you give your own opinion, or you need to um, mention it when you are actually summarizing the suggestions that are given. But question five is not a big deal for most test takers. Now question six is always hard. Um, and the biggest problem with content for question six is that people do not handle it properly. They try to say everything possible that they wrote down. They don't break their answer into sections. They don't work through the content um, in, in a nice organized way. And they try to say too much and they rush and they miss details. So a key point in terms of content is your ability to paraphrase, ability to summarize, pick out key details, um, and then work through them progressively within that time limit. So, you know, there's some of the common content problems that I have encountered for TOEFL speaking. I hope they give you some tips and I hope you'll think about them um, in your own preparation for the TOEFL speaking test. Good luck.